Hey everyone, in today's video I want to talk about how to use the request decorators in Flask. So the request decorators are used for doing something before the request, after the request is completed, and after the request has run. And using these three things you can add a little more control to your application. Um, instead of writing code that occurs in every request, you can just write these general decorators that will always run for every single request that you have. So in this video, I already have set up the, um, the bare bones of a Flask app and I started the server and everything and it's running but it doesn't return anything useful. So what I want to do is demonstrate how the request decorators are getting fired. So the request decorators are really easy to declare. Um, it's just app dot whatever the decorator name is. So in this case, uh, I'm going to start with before requests. And I'll name the function before requests as well. It doesn't need to be the same as the decorator name, but it's the easiest name to use. So before requests gets called before the request gets called. So let's say someone tried to go to this index. Um, they will type in the URL and then they'll have a slash for the index. And what happens in Flask is once they call it, the first thing that gets called is this, app before requests. It will do whatever is in here. And then after this is completed, it will move on to this. And then it will execute anything in here. So to demonstrate, let me let me declare a global variable. Let's call it request state. And it's going to be nothing for now. So before request is going to modify this global variable. Oops. So request state. And I'll just say request state is going to be whatever request state is plus before requests. And then in the response for the route, I'll say hello, and then I'll say uh, whatever the request state is. So if this truly works before the request, then this should have been populated with before requests before this even gets run. So we should see hello and then before request. So let me run this. And we see it. So that's a really simple example and it's probably best if I contrast it with another one of the request decorators. So let's use the actor requests. So I'll call the function the same as the decorator as well. And the difference between these two is the function here will take in one value. And the value that it takes in is the response object. So I'll call this response. And it needs to return a response. Now you can modify the response if you would like in here, but I'm not, I'm just going to pass it back. So what happens when uh, the route gets called? So someone goes to the index. The first thing that happens is this before request gets called. Then it goes in here and then it runs the index. And then finally after this, it will pass whatever was returned and it will go to the after request. So let me modify this global variable again. And I will say this. All right, so we already know that before request will show up because it happens before the request. But since this only occurs after the request, we shouldn't see it the first time we call the index because this only this after request string only gets added uh, after the route gets called. So let me see. So I just called it again and it has hello before request. It says nothing of the after request. But if I run this again, now I see the after request is in there. I probably should have added a space. But 
this was executed after that first request was run. And then it calls before requests again because I have a second request. And if I request the index again, it does the same thing. So finally, let me show you the teardown. Teardown requests. So the difference between teardown request and after request is they both run after the request, but teardown request always runs regardless of what happens in the request. After request only runs if um, the request was successful. So if there was an exception in your request, then after request will get skipped and only teardown requests will get called. So this will take in one thing, an exception. And you don't need to return anything from um, teardown requests, only after requests. So I'll do the same thing. I'll modify request state to say teardown. So I'll remove the requests here. So it just says before, after, teardown. And I'll add a new line. So now when we call the index, before request should get called first, then it calls the index, and then it goes to after requests, and then it goes to teardown requests. So we don't see after or teardown because this was called before those two things were called. But if I run it again, we see that after was called and teardown was called. And then now that we have another call, before is there. If I run it again, same thing, and it's going to continue to happen. So why did I tell you this? What was the point of this whole video? Well, sometimes you wanna do things for every request and it would be tedious to write it every time. So one example would be um, checking if a user is logged in. You want to check if a user is logged in on every request so you know whether to display say their profile or display a link to the login screen or whatever you want to do. So instead of writing in every single route that you have um, code to check if they're logged in, you can just put it in the before requests and then you can then do something uh, with that code in your uh, routes. And then after requests and teardown requests are useful for things that you want to occur after the user has already seen your response and uh, you need to do something behind the scenes. So the typical case for this is a database connection. Typically, uh, when you're working with a database, you'll have to open the connection when the request starts. And then after the request is done, you need to close the connection again. And a teardown request would be perfect for this because it always runs regardless of what happens in the request. So even if the request fails, you still close down the database. So uh, you don't have any connection issues when you go to uh, request something from the database again. So uh, you probably won't always need to use these, but you know, I make these videos to just make you aware of some of the things that are possible. And this is one of the other things that are possible in Flask. So if you have any questions about this, just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it. And if you like this video, just hit like and if you like my channel, uh, it would be great if you subscribed. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.